The video today is to do a review of the Canon R6 Mark II for astrophotography purposes. Just a very few brief details on the specs of the camera. In terms of the context for the review, just a few items of where I've come from. Now, apart from being an astrophotographer, I also do a fair amount of landscape photography. I do commercial photography, which ultimately encapsulates everything. I do an amount of uh, headshots. I do video work. I do your 360 photospheres. I do a lot of time-lapsing, some aerial photography. I also do a lot of event work. It's probably the only recent model sort of camera that I've ever purchased. So at this point of time, I have a Canon 550D, I have four Canon 6Ds, I have a Canon R, and of course this R6 Mark II, in addition to a splattering of other cameras. I've got a Nikon, or a couple of Nikon cameras, uh, drone, action cameras, 360 cameras, and so on. Now, what I like about this camera, so I do like the ergonomics of the camera. It's got all the buttons and dials which feel quite comfortable for me to use. I especially like switching between photos and video very quickly. And I've done that in quite a lot of my event work as well. So I'll actually be photographing with the camera and then I'll just quickly swap over to video and just do some quick video and then quickly swap back to being a camera. With the video side of things, it does 4K video with a very bare amount of uh, cropping. I'm quite happy with the IBIS so far because it allows me to do a lot more handheld video which I wouldn't have tried before. There has been some reports of some strange jitters with the IBIS. Uh, I haven't encountered that myself so far, but uh, I believe it's mainly with the ultra wide and if you use the digital image stabilization as well, which might crop it in a little bit more, then uh, I don't think the, uh, the jitters are an issue. Now I like being able to record the video to both two memory cards at once. What I also really like about the Canon R range is the adapters, is that I have an awful lot of lenses, but what it does do is it allows me to use an adapter and using my existing EF mount lenses and also have a neutral density filter in there as well. There's a variable ND which allows me to change the shutter speed which is especially handy for doing video. There's also another filter that you can apparently get which is a light pollution filter to pop in the slot as well. I haven't got that yet, might try that later on. I also like the, the autofocus, has been pretty good for me so far and also the fast shutter speeds. So this will do reportedly 40 frames per second or 12 frames per second on mechanical shutter. The camera has a, a very low sort of audible click noise. So when you're basically pressing the shutter, it's relatively quiet. Uh, it does have a silent shutter mode. It's not actually as quiet as the previous Canon R6, but a silent shutter is very useful for photographing events. There's actually a, a very interesting sort of uh, preview shoot mode, which I've actually tried a few times. It allows you to capture about half a second worth of shots at 40 frames per second. Uh, that's very useful when you're waiting for something to happen, but you're not quite sure exactly when. And uh, basically, if you were to just purely hold down the shutter and do a, a straight burst at, say, 12 frames per second or 40 frames per second, you'd be filling up your memory card very quickly and also the, uh, your buffer might start filling up. A few things which I'm not quite happy with the camera so far, which might be just be user error at this point, is sometimes it swapped over to auto ISO, which I might not want, especially if I'm shooting full manual and I actually want to manually set everything. Uh, it could purely be that I've just knocked the, uh, the dial uh, but it can, has been a little bit frustrating at times. I should probably use the lock button so it doesn't do that. Another thing that I sometimes don't like is autofocus. I have the, uh, the object tracking off and I'm actually wanting to shoot a specific point autofocus and I think it's actually sometimes gripped on something else. Uh, it might also be that the other item that does focus on might actually be within the same focal plane, so it might be perfectly fine. 
or it might just be user error at that point. I suppose the camera could have a higher megapixel count, it's got 24.2. Uh, I actually don't want to have too high megapixel for a lot of the things I do. In terms of, say, shooting a lot of the events, I actually need to process the photos fairly quickly. So the speed of upload of the memory cards is quite important to me. Now astrophotography wise, which is why everyone's probably here, is that in brief, I'm quite happy with the camera so far. Uh, I was out at a salt lake doing a number of imaging tests. A lot of the other cameras that I've got were already occupied during time lapsing or, or other duties as, as to speak. So I wasn't really comparing it with the other cameras and settings at that point. So I tested the camera out using an ultra wide lens at 15 mil. So I could capture the foreground and also the sky elements just to see how it performed. In terms of my methodology as well, I also brightened these, each exposure to match how I would normally shoot an astrophotography image. And I also did some preliminary sort of uh, processing so it would actually stretch the image a little bit more. Now, test-wise, what I found was the uh, between the 6D, the R and the uh, R6 Mark II is Color noise was probably worse on the 6D. Now I always use the 6D as a comparison because it's still, in my opinion, one of the best astrophotography cameras around. It's got very good noise control. But with the 6D, you can actually see there's a bit more color noise in terms of purple and green blotches uh, when it's stretched. And then there you have the R and R6 Mark II, which are quite similar in terms of the, uh, the noise control. Now in terms of luminance noise, all the cameras in my opinion were fairly comparable. I think maybe the R6 Mark II was a little bit better than the other two in terms of performance. Now what I did find out fairly early is that I didn't actually turn off the IBIS. So it, uh, just like normal sort of astrophotography or landscape photography, you should actually turn off your image stabilization before you start photographing, otherwise it can actually create some form of vibration. So another thing I liked about the Canon R6 Mark II was it's got an internal bulb counter. So I could photograph exposures a lot longer than say 30 seconds without using an intervalometer. I know a lot of other cameras have already got that in place, but it was actually nice to have that inbuilt into the camera for a Canon. Now, I think something that came up which was quite interesting while imaging with the three cameras was actually the ergonomic side of things in terms of the back screen or, or through the EVF. So for focusing in astrophotography, typically what we'll do is we will use the live view and we'll just seesaw the focus back and forth on a bright star. And then if we see a fainter star, I might seesaw the focus back and forth on that until it's in focus. I believe the Sony a7 IV actually has a bit of a boost mode as well for focusing. So it will even slow down the shutter even further on the live view to help with the focus. Someone might correct me about that. But I found between the three cameras, the Canon R6 was perhaps a little bit darker, but arguably you could actually just increase the screen brightness. And it was a little bit grainy in terms of the live view. I found shooting with the f2.8 lens for the purposes of doing the test. It, on the Canon R, it was really quite grainy. And the side effect of that was the, you can see the bright stars quite easily, however, uh, seeing the fainter stars was a lot more difficult due to the amount of snow that was happening on the screen. 
Now the Canon R6 Mark II I found extremely well noise controlled in terms of the, uh, the back of the screen when I was trying to focus. So it was quite easy for me to focus on even the faint stars. So in a nutshell, I'm quite happy with the Canon R6 Mark II as an astro camera. I'm going to continue testing and trying out different things with it. Uh, I hope this has helped in terms of a video. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.